Hi everyone and welcome to a replay of my 2017 Red Hat Summit talk titled Automating Security Compliance for Physical, Virtual, Cloud and Container Environments using Red Hat CloudForm, Satellite, Insights and Ansible Tower. My name is Lucy Kerner and I'm the Principal Technical Marketing Manager for Security at Red Hat. And in this role, I'm the Global Technical Evangelist for Security across all of Red Hat's products and work on things like go-to-market strategy and also work on the creation of security-related technical content for Red Hat's products. So let's begin. So first of all, why would you want to automate security compliance? I was reading the 2017 Verizon Data Breach Investigations Report and I was really surprised that even in 2017, 81% of hacking-related breaches leveraged either stolen or weak passwords. And I was actually really surprised to read that because this is something that can be easily avoided when you automate security compliance. So when you manually ensure security of compliance, so let's say you have thousands of checks you're doing, uh, security checks and fixes that you're doing across thousands of machines that are living in multiple different environments, whether it's VMware, Amazon, Azure, and then even containers that you are starting to introduce to your environment. So now you have all these security checks you have to do manually. This is gonna be very time consuming. This is very high, uh, highly prone to human error. You know, I don't care how smart you are, humans will make errors. That's just the nature, right, of humans. The bad actions by, you know, maybe several some sysadmins that you have in your, in your company they will go undetected when you when you manually check security. This is also obviously very tedious and boring, not easy to do audits, and definitely not repeatable or shareable. Instead, what you want is centralized management of your entire heterogeneous infrastructure. So whether it's so a because you can't actually control what you don't know about. So whether you have physical machines, virtual machines, such as um, you know machines in VMware, Hyper-V, Red Hat Virtualization, et cetera, even public cloud, Amazon, Azure, Google Compute, and even containers, you want that centralized management of this mixed environment that you have, because again, you can't control what you don't know about. You want automation, automation, automation. You wanna, make, you wanna try and automate as much as you can. You want infrastructure and security as code, because that will give you that repeatability. You will be able to share your code. It's more verifiable and it's easier to do compliance audits. At provisioning time, you want that hardened security compliant host because this is gonna give you that immutable operating system. The OS can't be changed by untrusted parties. You want that automated monitoring fixing of that that newly provisioned security compliant host, but also all of the rest of the systems in your environment for its entire life cycle. And you want to do proactive versus reactive security. So what tools can I use to help me with all of this? Let's start with SCAP. So what exactly is SCAP? It stands for Security Content Automation Protocol. And this is a standard that's backed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology and this is a standardized way of maintaining the security of your system specifically vulnerability and configuration security baselines. Open SCAP is a NIST certified and validated SCAP scanner by Red Hat that ships free with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and with Red Hat Satellite. And again, this is the configuration and vulnerability scanner. And there are other very expensive NIST validated and certified SCAP scanners out there. And some customers are mandated to use these um, during secure for security audits. But you wanna consider that, again, Open SCAP is free with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and Red Hat Satellite. So the Linux admins can use OpenSCAP to proactively scan their systems before the security teams comes to their security audits 
That way you don't have tons of failures right from the beginning. The admins could have could take care of some of those security checks and fixes beforehand be, before they do those security audits. This is the press release that states that OpenSCAP um, that ships with Red Hat Enterprise Linux and uh, Satellite is um, NIST certified, is, is a NIST certified configuration and vulnerability scanner. SCAP Workbench is a GUI based tool and this serves as the actual SCAP scanner in GUI form and also allows you to do per, um, tailoring for the SCAP content. So what I mean by that is let's say there is a profile that um, for the US Department of Defense there's the Dissistig profile but your company doesn't need to be as you know, strict with the, their security checks as the US Department of Defense. So you want to maybe delete some checks in there or modify it somehow. So how you can do that is with SCAP Workbench. However, Open SCAP and SCAP Workbench only scans a single machine. But most customers, they don't just have one machine. They have thousands of machines living all over the place, whether it's in VMware, whether it's in Amazon, whether it's in Azure. And they want to be able to scan, report on, and remediate all of these systems. They also want a way to provide their users with a self-service portal where the users come in and press a button and provision a security compliant host, but the admin still has tight control over that entire mixed infrastructure that's in their environment, whether it's Ver VMware, whether it's Amazon, whether it's Azure. When that user presses that order button, the user cannot decide what machine in what environment it, that they're going to provision. The admin will decide all of that depending on things like utilization. Maybe you as the admin know you're running out of space in VMware. Maybe you know as the admin that this, this user who logs in, let's say Lucy logs in, and you know that Lucy is infamous for racking up the Amazon bill. So you decide that depending on certain criteria, such as who logs in or utilization of the environment or, you know, things like, you know, in May, I want, you know, I want to provision in Amazon, but in June, I'll decide to provision in Azure or whatever your criteria may be. You as the admin will abstract away the infrastructure and have that tight control over that infrastructure and let the, and you decide where that, um, uh, that machine will be provisioned to and how it will get provisioned, how locked down you want that machine depending on the person who decides to provision that. So this is what I mean by that tight control over that entire infrastructure. And then once that, that machine is provisioned, you want to do that automated ongoing security compliance for its entire life cycle for that machine and the rest of that machines in your, in your mixed environment. So you want to do that automated ongoing security compliance and remediation for the entire life cycle of your, all the machines in your environment. Now that you're introducing, maybe some of you are introducing um, some new technology in your environment such as containers, and now you have to you know, ensure that all your thousands and thousands of container images in the environment are free of vulnerabilities and you don't want to have admins do this manually. You have more containers than you ever had of the virtual machines, and there's no way that an admin can look inside each one of them and ensure that they're vulnerable, vulnerability free without missing one by mistake. So you wanna make sure that you wanna do this in an automated fashion. So how do you do that? And this is what we're going to um, spend our time talking about on how you can solve some of these issues. So the secret to solving these issues is that using a combination of not only OpenSCAP, but a combination of our Red Hat management products. So Red Hat CloudForms, Ansible Tower, Red Hat Insights, and Red Hat Satellite. So Red Hat CloudForms, we're going to be talking about all of these products a little bit in a little bit and how it's going to help you with these issues. And specifically, what we're going to talk about is First of all, how do you create that security compliant host at provisioning time? Once it's provisioned, how, do you, how are you going to automate that ongoing security compliance, ensure governance and control, and do that proactive versus reactive security with Red Hat Insights? 
all in your mixed heterogeneous environment, whether it is physical machines, virtual machines, uh, cloud such as you know Amazon, A Azure, or Google Compute, and even container environment. So how are you going to ensure all of this? So this is what we're going to spend the next um, the rest of the talk on. How do you create that security compliant host at provisioning time with Red Hat Cloud Forms and Ansible Tower? So first of all, what is Red Hat Cloud Forms? Red Hat Cloud Forms provides unified management across your heterogeneous environment, whether you have virtual a virtual environment such as VMware, Hyper-V, Red Hat Virtualization, a public cloud, you're looking at public cloud, Amazon, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, uh, containers, uh, and you want also management of your software-defined networking environment. All of that unified management can be done by with CloudForms across all of these environments. So CloudForms can uh, see this environment, collect data about that environment. Now CloudForms' foundation is data. And so with that data, I can create control policies, with that data, um, I can create um, automation and even integration. Ansible Tower is an automation. Uh, you can do automation with Ansible Tower without writing code. So the automation is in human-readable format in YAML. It gives you. That's how it's simple. It's also an agentless solution, and it's very powerful as well. And this is uh, it, this way you can actually have that common automation language across not only your Windows team, but what your Linux team and your even networking team. So all of these teams can have a same way of, uh, of uh, doing automation with Ansible. With CloudForms 4.5, which is its most recent release, Ansible is actually inside CloudForms. So this becomes the default automation for CloudForms. So what I mean by this is Red Hat CloudForms is delivered as a pre-configured Red Hat Enterprise Linux virtual machine that is running a Ruby on Rails application. So in CloudForms 4.5, Ansible is actually installed on top of um, cloud forms, which means that now you can do uh, run Ansible playbooks right from cloud forms without doing any uh, doing much you know plumbing behind the scenes to get that working. So it becomes that default automation for cloud forms, which means that that automation story of cloud forms becomes that much more powerful. So now let's talk about the first demo. What you're going to see. We're going to create that security compliant host at provisioning time. At the push of an order button in CloudForms, behind the scenes, what's going to happen is you're going to, CloudForms has an sta internal state machine, and it's a checklist that you do in order. So well, first, CloudForms is going to look at the checklist, and it's, the checklist is going to say, oh, you, want to pro it's going to pro you need to provision a VM in VMware. Then the next item in the checklist, in the internal state machine, is going to be registering that machine with satellite. And that's going to be done with an Ansible playbook, an Ansible job template, Ansible Tower job template. And then another Ansible job template is going to launch the Ansible playbook for making that machine compliant to the Department of Defense security guideline, which is the Defense Information Systems Agency Security Technical Implementation Guide. So this is the DISSYSTIG. So it's going to make that machine compliant to the DISSYSTIG all at the push of a button without writing a single line of code and with multi-tenancy. So multi-tenancy being, okay, let's say I have two different departments and each department I want to present different order buttons. Maybe you want the math department to be able to provision certain type of machines in certain environments uh, VMware or Amazon, but you want the English department to only provision inside Microsoft Hyper-V for whatever reason you have. You can have that, that further isolation and that further control over the infrastructure. So admin has that tight control over the entire heterogeneous infrastructure and you only allow certain people to provision in certain environments whether it's Amazon, VMware, Hyper-V, uh, Azure, whatever uh, environments you have that CloudForms is, can, is managing, 
based on whatever criteria you have, whether it's based on you know what tenant is that user in, whether whether it's based on how much utilization is in uh, is in VMware, what's capacity utilization of what's in VMware. So you know you know for a fact, cloud forms knows all the capacity utilization of the um, environment. So you can make decisions on if I'm running out of space there, maybe I shouldn't be provisioning there. You know that kind of thing. So now let's see this in action. In this demo, we'll be showing how to create a security compliant host app provisioning time using CloudForms Satellite and Ansible Tower. So you, here you can see the Ansible Tower playbook for the RHEL 6 statistic and various role variables um, that you can overwrite to see how locked down you want the server. So category 1, 2, 3 would define how locked down you want it and other uh, variables. So when we go to the Ansible Tower itself, you can see here are all the job templates in Ansible Tower, including the statistic job template as you see here. You can see that this is how you apply the statistic, um, rel statistic to the VMs and templates. And then you can see the actual playbook here listed as well. So when we go to CloudForms, we're going to log into CloudForms as the admin to look at our service catalog. So once you log in and you go to service catalog, you can see that these are all the service catalogs um, at the point of view of admin. So admin can see every single service catalog and all the tenants. So we can see there's various ones such as Hello World, uh, you can see that um, custom installing custom package, registering to satellite, and then here is the RHEL 6 statistic um, service catalog. So here when um, this button is pushed, it's going to provision a, a RHEL 6 VM in VMware vCenter, register that machine with satellite, and it's going to run the RHEL 6 statistic Ansible playbook on top of that newly provisioned VM. And then the user also has the option to overwrite the default variables on this Ansible jo uh, Tower job template. So when I press order, then magic happens behind the scenes. CloudForms is going to go through the steps in its internal state machine, which is a list of steps that has to be done in order. So first thing it's going to do is it's going to uh, launch a provision, a RHEL 6 machine in VMware vCenter. So there you can see that it's been on um, provision. Once the IP address uh, is, the, once the VM has an IP address, the next step is going to execute, which is registering that machine with satellite. And that is going to be done by a uh, Ansible Tower job template for registering that machine with satellite. So you can see here that that machine is now registered to satellite. Then the next step will execute, which is the second Ansible Tower job, play, um, job template, which is the actual desistic uh, playbook. So this is the playbook that's going to make this machine desistic compliant with the uh, all the variables that you passed it, uh, in from the CloudForms service dialog. So now I'm going to log out as the admin and log in as a child tenant user. So this uh, Peter Gibbons is a is a user in a child tenant in the DevOps tenant. So he's going to be able to see all the service catalogs that the admin created, but also catalogs that are unique to people in their the, the people that are part of that the DevOps tenant. So you can see here, this is a special service catalog item that um, this is a service special catalog that it, what it's going to deploy is a RHEL 6 machine, it's going to register satellite and run the Center for Internet Security playbook. So now I'm going to log out and log in as a different uh, user and a different tenant. So Susie Van Puppington is part of the security tenant. So you can see that you can see, she can see every single t uh, catalog that the admin created, but she can't see the, dev the catalogs from the DevOps tenant. And uh, you can only see the catalogs from the... Uh, security tenant. So here you can see there's the security team, the RHEL 6 statistic. So this is a playbook that's unique to the security team and it's a modified version of the statistic and only certain variables are allowed to be overwritten by this user. You can also create a security compliant host in Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7.2 and 7.3 and beyond. So and also you can create that security compliant host with Satellite 6. So, for example, you you could you know, right in the rel installer in the GUI rel installer, you can actually cre uh, select what uh, security profile you want this push that machine to be locked down to. But of course, you know most people don't install machines by the installer, so you can of course use uh, can kickstart then do all of this by kickstart as well. Um, to create that security compliant host. And again, as, as I said earlier, you can also use Satellite 6 to create your security compliant hosts as well.
Now, how do I automate the ongoing security compliance using Red Hat CloudForm, Satellite, OpenSCAP, and Ansible Tower? So for the newly provisioned machines, but also for all the rest of my the machines in my environment. So in this next demo, what we're going to do is we're going to go to a particular machine and we're, we want to do a security scan on a per VM basis. So what we, and at the push of a button. So what we want to do is we're going to go to a VM and when I go to the VM, I'm going to select a chosen security profile that I as the user will choose. So I'm going to say, I want to scan this machine against PCI DSS. I want to scan it against a custom profile that I created. Or I want to scan it against the Department of Defense's DSSTIC. Now I'm going to keep track of the results of the scan. So when the scan passes, I want to tag that machine as SCAP compliant with the name of this, the profile. When the scan fails, I'm going to do a few more things because I need to keep track of things that the scans that fail. I want to tag that machine as SCAP non compliant with the name of the profile. I want to email the owner of the VM because again, CloudForms knows information about your infrastructure, including the owner of the virtual machine. I want to automatically open a ticket in a ticketing system. In this case, I use integration with ServiceNow, but I could have easily used any other ticketing product, Jira. Um, I could have also used uh, Remedy, you know, anything that has a web service uh, API. And then I, when I open up that ticket, I want I am going to uh, open it up with um, the name, not only the name of the failed VM, but all the other details CloudForms knows about that machine, which, whether it's IP address, whether, whether it's parent cluster, whether it's when it was first provisioned, whatever. And then I'm going to create a report of all the SCAP compliant machines and non-compliant machines based on the security profile. So maybe I want to know, hey, I don't care where this machine lives, whether it lives in Amazon, whether it lives in Hyper-V, whether it lives in Azure, tell me every one of them that fails the PCI DSS profile. Tell me every one of them that is passing my custom profile that I created, whether it's called top secure, top, top secret, or whether it's called, you know, core base OS, where I'm just checking to see if one package is installed. And that's all I care about this. Um, critical package, I want to make sure that it's installed. So I'm going to check that and that's my custom profile. So I want to create a report because I want to show that to my management, for example, and keep track of it every Monday, for example. Now, I want to push a button. Once I have, you know, what's failing, what's not failing, I want to actually push a button to fix those security issues on a per VM basis. Once I feel comfortable, then I can do that fix across all of my she machines in my environment at the push of a button. So this is what we're going to see in, in our next demo. So now let's see this in action. In this demo, we're going to talk about how to automate the ongoing security and compliance of your heterogeneous environment using a mix of Red Hat's manager products and open as cap. So I'm going to log into cloud forms as the admin. And when I log in, I'll be presented with all of my VMs in my environment. So I'm going to look at this particular VM, which is my RHEL 6 virtual machine. And I'm going to press the button to run an open as kept scan on it uh, with this custom button that will launch my custom integration. So in the, when I push that button, I get presented with a list of security profiles that I can choose from. It tells me if I've ever scanned it, scanned the machine with that profile. And if I have not, I'm going to launch this custom profile called core base OS. And it's just going to check one thing. It's going to check to see if a particular package in, is installed in this particular case is the aid package. You can see that when I did the scan that this particular VM it did not uh, uh, does not have this package installed. So I'm going to refresh the VM and when I refresh the VM I can see the tag information in the bottom. You can see um, this tag this machine is now list um, tagged as SCAP non-compliant for that core base OS custom profile that I created which again just checks to see if the aid package is installed. It is also going to create a um, ticket uh, ticket number for ServiceNow, which is my ticketing system. And so there you can see the ticket number for uh, inside for ServiceNow. And when I go to ServiceNow, here you can see the actual ticket has been automatically created for me. And the ticket description includes the VM name and the name of the SCAP policy that it failed and also the owner of that VM. Also, all of the information that CloudForms knows about that VM, such as IP address, host name, et cetera, are passed from CloudForms to ServiceNow as part of the ticket. 
Then the owner of the VM is also emailed upon the scan failure with information about the name of the profile, the owner of the VM, uh, and also informing the user that, uh, that they need to update their machine. Then you can, if I actually look into the RHEL 6 VM, you can see that the R8 packages is confirmed and not installed. So I'm going to actually um, push the remediate button that's going to install the aid package for me at the push of a button. So I'm going to go and press the remediate button and then pick the same SCAP profile. In this case, it's the core base OS profile. You can see that it's now said fail because last scan it failed. So when I now look at RPM QA and aid, you can see that now the package has been installed for me. So when I rerun the scan, I can and I want to confirm that the open SCAP scan, the tag is going to be updated. Um, and so that uh, to, just to confirm that the scan passes, so I, I press the scan button. You can see here now that the satellite um, is saying, "Okay, yes, you did this. This check now passes. The package aid is in, in fact installed." And then when I go back to Cloud Forms and I'm going to refresh to see that the tag has now been updated to SCAP compliant for the core base OS profile. So now I'm going to go into satellite six, and I'm going to do um, I want to do the scan using uh, OpenSCAP in satellite six. So I'm going to attach this RHEL seven standard uh, uh, security policy to this RHEL seven uh, RHEL seven common security policy to this RHEL seven box, and then I'm going to once that policy is, uh, is uh, attached, then I'm going to launch the OpenSCAP scan, this time using the Satellite 6's OpenSCAP uh, tool inside. So once I launch the scan, this time around, the custom integration is with Ansible Tower, and the sat Ansible Tower job template for the Satellite as OpenSCAP scan is going to get launched. And then you can see that this has been launched against that, my RHEL 7 virtual machine. And now it's being run on that uh, RHEL 7 virtual machine that I have. Now you can see that that Ansible Tower job has been successfully completed, which means that the SCAP scan uh, RHEL 7 common uh, profile for that RHEL 7 common profile is complete. So when I go to host reports in satellite, here I can see that all the, the results of that um, scan. So you can see here are all the uh, 20 to 29 failures and nine passes that I have for that RHEL 7 common uh, security compliance uh, policy that I just scanned on at the push of a button. So now what I'm going to do is I want to fix those uh, failed um, security uh, checks. So then what, that, what that's going to do is launch a different Ansible Tower job template for the Satellite 6 SCAP Remediate. It's going to remediate using um, it's that it's going to run as cap remediate and now you can see that everything you have 36 passes and two failures two failures and when i look uh, in depth about what failed you can see that the uh, that it's uh, issues with the separate partitions and that we're going to fix manually and everything else you can see has passed so now i can look at a report since everything's been tagged which one is as cap compliant and on the core base OS profile. And I can see other information about the VM, such as IP address or date created, and any other information CloudForms collects about the VM. And then I can see here, show me that all the SCAP non-compliant, for example, for the PCI DSS profile, and also show me other information, such as IP address and the date it was created. Now, CloudForms has a really powerful and flexible control and policy engine right inside CloudForms, as a, in, in, right in the GUI of CloudForms. So with that, what we're going to do is jump into the next demo, and we're going to look at this, the power and flex trio of CloudForms' control engine and policy engine. So what we're going to see is CloudForms is going to check to see if your machine is vulnerable to shell shock. But it could be any, any vulnerability, because CloudForms is able to look deep inside the machine even either machine is turned off and used without using any agents down to the packages that are installed in it processes even down to config files so i can see versions names of packages version release number of package and with that i can determine if this machine is vulnerable to shell shock if that machine is vulnerable to shell shock then i'm going to have cloud forms fix that machine using just by simply pressing a button that says remediate shell shock. 
that's going to launch an Ansible playbook to remediate this machine against the Shellshock vulnerability. We're also going to see how CloudForms can check to see if any OpenShift container images has severely high vulnerabilities. If it does, then, um, then CloudForms is going to make an annotation in that container image. And then when you try to launch that container uh, with the contain that vulnerable, uh, the high severity vulnerability container image, OpenShift is going to prevent that vulnerable image from ever running in OpenShift again. So now let's see this in action. In this demo, we're going to be talking about the power and flexibility of the Red Hat CloudForms control and policy engine. So I'm going to log into the admin portal of CloudForms as the admin, and I'm going to navigate to the control and policy engine of CloudForms. So when I navigate there, I'm going to see a policy for the shell shock vulnerability. So here, CloudForms is going to check to see if that machine is vulnerable to shell shock by looking at the package name, the version number of the package, and the release number. And if, if it finds that this machine is has that properties, then it's going to mark it as non-compliant. So you can see that this RHEL 7 machine has a control policy attached to it. So when I navigate a little further to see what that control policy is, I can see that this particular um, the policy is the demo for the shell shock vulnerability, the one policy that we just looked at earlier. So that policy is assigned to this um, virtual machine. So I'm going to go exit out of the control policy engine. And you can see that when I look at the summary view of the VM, that this VM is not compliant to that assigned shell shock vulnerability policy. So when I look deep deeper to see why it's not compliant, you can see the reason it's not compliant is because of the, the failure with this shell shock vulnerability control policy. So I'm going to go back to my VM. And when I go back, I can know and I'm going to look notice that there's a, all the packages in it process and files and I can dig, dig, dig deeper by clicking on packages and I can see here's all my packages with release and version numbers. So now I'm going to fix this vulnerability by pushing the Shellshock remediation button in CloudForms as, as you saw that I did. That's going to launch an Ansible playbook for um, remediating that VM against Shellshock. So if I look at the jobs, I can see that that job is being run. The Shellshock um, the Shellshock remediation playbook is being run in inside Ansible Tower. And uh, you can see now it's been successful so that now the RVM is remediated against Shellshock. So what that playbook does is update the bash, uh, install the latest bash package. So I'm gonna uh, launch a uh, scan, uh, uh, analysis scan on this machine just to make sure that CloudForms knows about this updated uh, bash package. And then when I relaunch the check, it now you can see that the uh, machine is now compliant. And then if I dig a little bit deeper, you can see that um, the machine is um, now passes the compliance check for the shell shock vulnerability. Now we're going to talk about how to manage security of OpenShift from Red Hat CloudForms. So I'm going to log into um, CloudForms again, and I'm going to go into the control engine. So in the in here in the control policy, there's a control policy here for open SCAP profile. So this what this you notice that there are three control policies assigned to this control policy profile. So we're going to look at all three of them and we'll start with the first one, which is uh, named here open SCAP. You can see here, all it does is CloudForms checks to see, are there any container images that has a severely high vulnerability? If it does, mark it as not compliant, and you, I want you to annotate the, um, CloudForms is going to annotate that image so that uh, that container image is prevented from ever running in OpenShift again. The next control policy checks to see uh, just whenever a new container image is discovered, a, a smart state analysis scan is run on that container image so that CloudForms knows what's inside that container image.
The last control policy, when the container image analysis is complete, automatically CloudFirms is going to check the host or VM compliance after the scan is complete. So now what's going to, um, if I go to container providers and, and I'm, I can see here my OpenShift provider. So what I'm going to do is I'm um, look at the control policies that are attached to the OpenShift provider. You can see that this open SCAP profile with those three control policies is attached to the OpenShift provider, which means that all container images in this provider will have this policy profile applied. This uh, open SCAP uh, policy profile is going to be applied. So I'm going to exit out. So next, I'm going to go into and look at that con uh, container image. So I'm going to start with the container and then go into the container itself. And then from the container, I can see the, the attached um, contain the actual container image that's living in that container. And so now inside the container image, I can see the packages, the OpenS kept scan results. Um, and here, notice that the scan results uh, of this container image, all you have to do is click on it to see the results. So here you can see that there are several severely high failures, you can see in red. So which means that you, you can suspect that um, all of the things we saw earlier in the, in the control policy is going to apply. So I'm going to go into OpenShift now uh, directly to OpenShift and I'm going to try to launch a container with this um, uh, container image that has all these um, high severity vulnerabilities. You can see here that I'm in the welcome PHP app. I'm going to add to the project. I'm going to deploy an image. I'm going to check, uh, select that uh, uh, severely high vulnerability image. And I'm going to try to deploy this, uh, the image with, this no with all those known severely high vulnerabilities. So I'm just going to say create now. So now let's now try and deploy this image with the with all those um, container with this image with all those severely high vulnerabilities. So the OpenShift is now trying to spin up a container with this vulnerable image, and you can see that that deployment has failed. So let's look a little deeper into why that deployment has failed. You can see here we get an error. It says uh, error creating pod forbidden. This image is pre. Uh, this image is prohibited by policy. So notice that um, the reason the deployment failed is CloudForms flagged this vulnerable image when you try to, so when you try to start a container with this vulnerable image, OpenShift is going to uh, prevent this uh, by, uh, with this annotation on the policy annotation that was set by CloudForms. Now you can do proactive security versus reverse proactive versus reactive security and automated risk management with Red Hat Insights. Red Hat Insights is part of the Red Hat management portfolio. And this is the product that will give you customized security and other information such as performance information about your particular machines before critical issues occur. And this is with the knowledge that we have from Red Hat support, from our, all the tickets that we have open, and also from our, directly from our Red Hat um, product security team. So this is going to allow you to do that automated risk management. It's going to reduce your risk um, in, a, in an automated fashion. What we're going to see in this next demo is that proactive security with Red Hat Insights. We're going to see a payload security issue, and specifically the payload injection issue on your machine in Red Hat Insights from both satellite or um, from both satellite and cloud forms. You can see uh, Red Hat. You can access Red Hat Insights from directly from the customer portal 
uh, or from Red Hat Satellite or from Red Hat Cloud Form. So you're going to see the payload injection issue. You're, upon fixing it, which you're going to, um, you, after you fix this issue, you're going to see that this issue no longer exists. So this is what you're going to see in the next demo. So now let's see this in action. In this demo, we're going to be talking about the proactive security and automated risk management with Red Hat Insights. So here I'm looking at Red Hat Insights from Red Hat Satellite, and I'm lo looking at the um, security information for the RHEL 7 virtual machine. You can see all these security problems with this machine, including this particular one about the kernel, the kernel being vulnerable to the man-in-the-middle attack via payload injection. And you can see here um, steps to resolve and what you can do to fix this problem. And in the uh, current release of Red Hat Insights, there's actually um, Ansible playbooks are provided to actually fix the issues as well. So you can see here, uh, I'm in my RHEL 7 machine and I've um, taken those steps to fix this machine against the, that payload injection issue that we saw. And then um, once I do that, I can go back into Red Hat Insights. This time I'm going into Red Hat Insights from Red Hat Cloud Forms. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at that RHEL 7 machine again and just confirm that the machine is now fixed against that payload injection. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look for that payload injection issue, just searching, and you can see I don't see it anymore, which means that that issue has been resolved. So in summary, we saw a way on how do you actually create that security co ho compliant host at provisioning time, at the push of a button, with that tight control over your uh, environment as the admin. Once that machine is provisioned, how do you actually automate the ongoing security and compliance for not only that machine, but every other machine in your, in your entire mixed environment? How are you going to ensure governance and control in an automated fashion? And how are you going to do proactive versus reactive security with Red Hat Insights? All giving, all with the by with a way of giving you flexibility and choice, and not forcing you to use one product versus another, but get forcing, allowing you to uh, use a mix and a combination of Red Hat's products, uh, depending on your use case. So obviously, this is going to give you that security at the push of a button and allowing you to save time and money. And while security was the thing we um, sh uh, showed as auto uh, the automation of what, what you automated today, the only limits in terms of what you can automate when you use Red Hat's management products and OpenSCAP, the only limits are the limits of your imagination. I want to thank you for your time today. And if you have any questions, I really want to hear, would like to hear from you and uh, encourage you to reach out at any time. Here is my contact information. My email address is lkerner at redhat.com. And uh, you can see my Twitter handle um, right below it, which is Lucy Cloudbling. Thank you so much for your time. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.